Hello and welcome to Toby's Blog's 50th anniversary special looking at the Doctor and we're looking at William Hartnell's um, uh, era and we are now going to look through season 3 of Doctor Who, William Hartnell's era. Now as most of you know season 3 unfortunately is not very well represented in the archives but season 3 was probably the strongest of Hartnell's seasons. Um, we begin the season with a story, Galaxy 4, which we found, uh, well not we personally, but I found an episode found recently was Galaxy 4, Episode 3, Airlock. Now Galaxy 4, uh, all we had was a six or maybe a longer minute clip. And some other, other clips, other clips of, of Chumleys, of Chumleys really and various things, and things. Um, been shown. Now, Galaxy 4 I think has an interesting thing that we've never seen before, as in you know, a, a race of all women, robotic women. And um, all robots? cultivated out of chest tubes. Oh. Yeah, they were robotic, sort of, you know, very efficient robots. And any men they had, they just killed. Mm. So, um, you know, which uh, I really love when she said that, and sort of, you know, Stephen and the Doctor kind of look like, mm. <laughs> why they killed them. Um, the Chumblies, I think, are, are cute. They're cute creatures. I wouldn't say they're the most effective in the world. Um, I like the visualisation of the Rills. Yes. And after seeing that, I thought, yeah, they look quite, you know, yeah. they look the part. Um, the Dravins, yeah, they're okay. I think what was brilliant about episode three was just the the madness of Marga. Mm. You know, so, when we conquer the lands, you know, and, you know, well, this planet will be destroyed and then with it. She just went absolutely mad, you know, and it was just like, oh, Marga, you're just amazing, you know, like the dictator here um, of everybody. And uh, also Vicky's association with the Chumblies, which was very cute and, and very nice uh, to see. Um, maybe maybe this was could be better worked as a two or three part story than a four parts. So maybe it could be deemed a little bit long for the, the plot line. Um, but I think it was enjoyable. I think the lady played Marga was very, very good. I think the reels were very, very good in this story. Um, we don't really see a great deal of the planet though you know it's kind of between spaceships and maybe that could have been more interesting um, so an average story I think to start the season Galaxy 4 there are a lot more gems in this season than that one but I wouldn't say it was the worst start in the world to a season then we move on to Mission Unknown Mission to the Unknown which is a unique story in Doctor yeah. Who history prior to the new series, mm. uh, where the Doctor doesn't feature at all. It's like a separate story that uh, sort of warms up things for the Dalek Master Plan, which takes pl place later in the season, and doesn't feature any of the regular cast. Mission to the Unknown, I think, was very, very good. I think it worked well, sort of break from the regular characters who are on holiday, and um, the fantastic creatures in the forest, those sort of plants, the, the Varga, Varga plants, plants, which uh, were deadly. The Daleks were just, well, vicious and angry and, you know, they want they wanted to wipe out the universe. And, of course, Marvick Chen, as played by Kevin Stoney, his first appearance in the series, was just phenomenal. Um, and we see Nicholas Courtney for the first time in his role as Brett Vian. And Is he in the Mission to the Unknown? Uh, oh, it is, it is not in that story. No, he's not in that story. He's not in that one, sorry. No, I'm thinking of the first episode of Dalek Master Plan. Corey. I think the other guy might be. Is that Brian? No, they all get killed off, don't they? Is he Brian Kent? Is that his Brian name? Brian Kent? It might be Brian Kent. I'm thinking of. I'm not sure. I've got them. I'm getting them mixed up now. But anyway, Mission to the Unknown works very well. Uh, obviously, Mark Corey is played brilliantly by uh, Edward de Souza. Um, and one of them gets exterminated by the Daleks. He, obviously, the tape at the end uh, that he's recording and he gets exterminated. It's just like, oh no! You know, how's the Doctor going to find out? And then he's like, the cassette. Ah. You know, but has the cassette been destroyed by the Daleks killing them? And of course, you get all these vicious aliens there, you know, um, all around the table. Victory! Victory! And various other things that they're discussing, you know. Um, but um, a good start, certainly, yeah. for what comes later on with Mission to the Unknown. We then move on to the Myth Makers, Vicky's departure story, which is a good historical. Um, I don't think it's the best one, though, in the world that we've seen from the ones before. Again, a lot of dialogue in the story. But it's wonderful to, to see how the Tro Trojan War is realised with the, the gigantic horse, the uh, love that's developed between Vicky and uh, one of the Trojan... Uh, it is one of the Trojan men, isn't it? I 
think so. I think it's one of the Trojan men. Um, uh, but when she met and fell in love with Trullius during the Trojan Wars, she chose to leave the TARDIS and stay. I can't know which side he was on, but... Um, and of course, Cressida was a terrible woman in the, in the story. She, you know, said, Oh, you should never trust her! She's evil! Um, but I would say that the story is an okay story. It's um, a perfectly um, good story to listen to, or if you've got the reconstruction of it to watch. Obviously, this is a missing story. Um, but I wouldn't say it was the best, unfortunately, and the best was to come after this story. But a good, a good departure of Vicky. But I know Maureen O'Brien said that she was disappointed with her exit story. She didn't mm -hmm. like it at all. And, um, you know, all this lovey-dovey stuff. No, she wanted a bigger exit than that. So, moving on. And what about the introduction of a new companion? Katerina. Katerina, yes. I think probably the most, uh, well, disappointingly realised one because she didn't last long with the Doctor, as we're going to find out soon. But... A nice character, definitely, and yeah. I think should have been given more time to develop. But mm. um, as her fate she shows, joins. things can be cruel in Doctor Who sometimes. She joins the TARDIS at the end of, episode, uh, of uh, Myth Makers. That's right, the Myth Makers. She's from the, the, the Greek time, so she all this stuff about the TARDIS and Yes, this is magic to her, just, just the gods, like, that's like, all she gods believes in. She's in heaven mm. or She doesn't really know what's going on. <laughs> she's a bit mad, I suppose, she doesn't know, but... Um, and then we move on to one of my favourite stories of all time, The Daleks' Master Plan. Yes, The Daleks' Master Plan. Spanning 12 episodes. The longest story uh, up to this point, of course. Yep. Now, uh, this story um, has a lot of interesting and unique yeah. things. I mean, we begin with episode one, which I think is a great episode. You know, we, we have Brian Kant at the beginning, um, and we have Nicholas Courtney, and... Um, they're in the jungle at the very beginning of the story and the Daleks sort of lurking around and it's very claustrophobic really isn't it? It's called you know, The Nightmare of, Begins isn't it? That's right and it's a fantastic start you know everything's set up it's ready from Mission to the Unknown it's like oh god yeah, this is this is where it begins you know and uh, I can't remember if we see Marvick Chen in the first episode I'm not sure now but um, do. certainly it's a shame that this episode doesn't exist because I think this will be quite a good episode to watch because some clips do exist from it um, obviously, maybe certain models of spaceships could have been a bit better, but I think it was okay. I yeah, think the, for the effects were fairly well realised. The, certainly the jungle was excellently realised. 1965 to 66. And the, the terrifying uh, effect of uh, the, the Varga plants uh, is very interesting. Yeah. Obviously, at the, at the very beginning, Brian Kant's character gets killed off, mm. and Nick Courtney's running around like a headless chicken wanting to get away as, uh, as quickly the as doctor possible. The captures him and puts him in the this kind of chair that stops him from moving. That's right, and that's very interesting because uh, Katerina's tested a bit at that stage because uh, he tries to persuade her um, to let him out the chair, which because, uh, does happen, doesn't, doesn't it? Stephen Taylor, I think. Ha Stephen has um, some sort of radiation disease or something. Yeah, something. And Stephen's so not needs, well. Needs paras he needs paracetamol or That's something. right, and uh, of course Brett has uh, the necessary drugs, he says. Yep. So, um, in the next episode, The Day of Armageddon, which is actually exists. Yes, that was newly discovered in 2005 and is probably yeah. the best find we've had since 1992. Um, we get to see the Daleks with their wonderful flames coming out, pyro flames, and destroying the, the jungle, um, sort of smoking at the, uh, the time travellers, because obviously they've discovered that the Doctor and his companions are around. And uh, they're not happy, of course. <laughs> no, not after the the trouble they cause. The doctor tries to um, take um, what you call it, the disguise of another person attending the meeting there, and to to find out what's going on. And the Daleks want the Terranium Core. Obviously, we can't go into too much detail on the story, otherwise we're going to run out of time. But assessing it in general, probably the high points of the story are the ruthlessness of the Daleks and Marvik Chen. Uh, the fact that Coming back. Oh, the meddling monk meddling returns. Monk. Uh, obviously, Jean Marsh Jean having Marsh. to shoot down her brother uh, in the and story. Then she joins the TARDIS. And That's then right, Sarah Kingdom shooting out Brett Vian. That's right, she joined, uh, was going to join the TARDIS, but she dies trying to reach the TARDIS because of the effects of the time destructor. Katarina, Katarina gets, gets killed off by a man from um, one of the uh, Just penal planets. Fantastic obviously, story. because um, she's. You know, it's doesn't know what she's story. pressing button-wise. Um, 
certainly extremely good and obviously I would say if any episode needs to be discovered now it's episode 12 <laughs> mm. because it's just uh, phenomenal the only thing which would be quite nice is the Feast of Stephen because that's a very different episode it was an episode in the middle that kind of just took us all completely away from the events and gave us a breather before the epic run up to the finale and uh, we know in um, in that so yeah, Feast of Stephen yeah she Mr. G Marsh moans that did the most pan, man told her to take her clothes off that's right well, we have to move on very yeah. quickly to the next one because we're running out of time here. Massacre. The Massacre, which I think is a very good historical oh, story. Some, uh, some people see. say that it's a bit boring, but I think it has a lot of uh, chilling moments, especially the Doctor and um, the Abbot of Amboise uh, characters, you know, that he sort of does a dual it's, role yeah, in the, the story. First double. That's right, it's the first it's the double. Four, before in the chase, they just use some... some yeah, but this the time doctor. they use the Doctor. Yeah. And um, it was very good, certainly, I think. William Hartnell played the uh, role very, very well. And, of course, Peter wasn't sure who was the Doctor and who was the Abbot. And at one point, I think at the end of one of the episodes, he thinks the Doctor's dead and the episode kind of ends there. And it's brilliant. Brilliant story. Um, mm. I wouldn't say it was the best historical, but it's still up there with um, certainly one of the better stories. We then move on to the Ark. Um, with the monoids. At this point, obviously, we have a new companion. Dodo Chaplet. Dodo just, Chaplet. Just runs into the TARDIS thing into the police box and goes off with them. That's right. And uh, Jackie Lane, I think, played the character quite well in this very first story of the arc. Um, I found the actual people that lived on the planet a bit, um, you know, over the top. Uh, the monoids were very well realised, I thought. It's really good about the story because we start off... We have a reverse of roles, don't different, we? ...a different period of time. Mm. Then, then the Doctor leaves and then comes back at a That's different right, period of time. That's right, because the monoids at the beginning are the slaves and then it's the other way around, the monoids yes. and the monoids are, are really good characters. They're evil, they kill people, they blast That's right. them. And there's a fantastic story with these monoids. We have the Refusians as well, which... Invisible creatures... I think that was disappointing to me because they could have been a lot better realised you know, than having these invisible entities. I mean, it's not, there's not really much creativeness in that, having invisible. Because we already had the Visions, you know, who are invisible in the Dalek Master Plan. Why have you got more invisible creatures? Maybe they yeah. just didn't have time or the money to create it. But I think, in all, it's a good story. Yeah. Definitely very watchable and enjoyable. And one of Jackie Lane's better ones, I think, um... Uh, featured her. We then move on to the Celestial Toymaker, which featured the magnificent Michael Goff. Um, this story, I think, has some very good elements about it, in particular um, the uh, room with the freezing chairs, uh, the wonderful, um, what do you call it, the sort of game they play when they're hopping the from ballerinas. place to place. The ballerinas. Exciting! Yeah. Definitely exciting. Cyril. Is he saying Cyril but at the end? this was a Doctor Light thing? story, wasn't it? I mean, the Doctor wasn't yeah, there most the of the time. The Doctor's playing his little game, and then mm. Dodo and it gave the, the chance to for the companions to have centre stage. Yeah, very different Dodo. story, watchable, but Dodo. not the best. I think yeah. if we had to say in this one, we then move on to the Gunfighters. Gunfighters. <clears throat> that horrible song. The ballad song, disappointing. <laughs> Um, overall, trying to do a Western on a small stage is very hard. But I think they came out with a a positive um, positive note. The to be later honest. episodes were quite interesting, I think, with the gunfighters, and then they get that massive yeah. at the end, and they start fighting. I think it was other. good to try it out. That's I mean, always worth trying out. And Doctor Who has tried a Western now on a couple of occasions, as with the. Most recent series, Matt Smith's uh, episode uh, lately, which was very similar to that. Um, certainly I wouldn't say pick up that DVD now, unless you're really desperate for it. But I still think it's a good story. We then move on to The Savages, um, which I think is a bit disappointing. I mean, you have the elders in that story who, again, dull, disappointing type characters. Um, Peter, I think, uh, Peter Purvis make, plays sort of centre stage as Stephen Taylor once again. Um, and then we get the appearance of someone who features as well in Planet of Evil, Michael Jager, I think, or Frederick J Frederick Jager, I think his name is, um, who plays um, the character very well um, in in The Savages. But again, I don't think it's the best story in the world. Probably the most interesting part is when the first Doctor, they try to um, do some sort of experiment on him. And let's try and suck his life force. That's and I, it, yeah. I think this is the beginning of where... Um, uh, William Hartnell starts to lose his life and start to. That's generate. right. He's wearing out he's a bit. Wearing out because he's, he's trying to suck his life force. He's wearing out. So that's the end of this part. We'll see you later for the next season. Thank you. And goodbye.